O oh God, by the leading of your star, you manifested your only Son to the people of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We know the way. Guided by the star, we are scientists, seekers with great knowledge, and we have traveled so far. We have studied the sky. It is our religion, our ancient ways. We are priests who seek God, who seek truth, who seek light, insight, revelation, and understanding. We have traveled far across desert, mountain, valley, and stream. The star guides us, tells us where we are going. The brightest star in the sky guides us to Bethlehem. Our faith and our tradition tell us that the star will show the way to a 15-year-old virgin who has given birth to the Holy One, the Messiah. And we have come prepared, prepared with gifts fit for a king. We bring treasures, things we treasure, things of great value to offer in thanks and to worship this miraculous Holy One. We bring gifts that we can carry, but gifts that are precious still. We hope, we pray, we plan to meet and worship this new and wondrous King, the Holy One of Israel, who will shepherd the people. So we do not bring ordinary gifts for an ordinary child. No, it is clear He is special. He is from God. It is marked by the stars. It is also plain for all to see that we are not from around here. We stop and ask the locals, where is the child, the newborn king of the Jews? But no one seems to know what we are talking about. Have they not seen the stars in the sky? Have they been so busy with their lives that they have missed all the signs? Have they not heard that the Christ has come to Bethlehem? We observed his star at its rising and traveled and have traveled a thousand miles carrying gifts for this king. We have come to worship him and bow down before the infant king. How strange, how sad that these local people, his own people, do not see, do not know the great joy that has come upon them this great honor, this great joy. Even the mighty King Herod and his advisors did not know. But we were looking, seeking. We had not just been watching for signs in the heaven, but we had also studied scripture and knew that it said, in Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. We traveled undeterred, walking, riding, watching the star and the sky over a thousand miles. When we saw that the star had stopped, we were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, we saw the child with Mary, his mother, and we knelt down and worshiped him. Then, opening our hearts and opening our treasure chests, we offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, we left for our own country by another road. We left for our own country by a different road. What do you see in the stars? What do you hear in your dreams, in the silence of your prayers, in the walk in your garden. Perhaps God is calling you, perhaps God is calling us at Grace Church to follow a new road, a different road in 2021. 
Historically, Epiphany is the season of evangelism, a time to leave family, friends, and familiar things of home life and to travel to far off places beyond Arkansas, perhaps to Austin, to Albuquerque, or Abilene, perhaps to Atlanta, or Austria, or Amsterdam, or Africa. We're called to tell people the good news that we have seen a great light and that we followed it until we met Jesus. And now that we know Jesus and bow before him, our lives, our paths are changed forever. And we will no longer listen to the lies, to the fear and to the hate spread by those in power of this world telling us what we ought to do. We know that we cannot trust those voices or our old worn path that has served God, that has served us, but not God. No, we are forever changed by our encounter with Christ. And we are called to journey home by a new road, a different road. Maybe this week when you're at home, you will offer a different prayer. Maybe you will choose to have a different conversation, to pick up the phone for reconciliation, to send a note or a card of encouragement, or even a check. Maybe this week as you are driving around town, you will take a different route to avoid the muscle memory of the same routine. And maybe you will look around and see something different something beautiful or something that is broken and needs to be fixed or someone who is broken and needs to be loved or encouraged. All we have is this moment together. All we have is the gift of another day. All we have is the journey whether it's under the night sky, in the rain, in the cold, in the fog, or in the brightness and sunshine of a new day. But we never travel alone. The Magi knew it is best to go with friends. And it is comforting to know that God is always with us, wherever we travel, like the star in the sky that shows us the way. What will you bring on your journey? Where will you stop along the way? Who will guide your footsteps? What will light the way? What will you see as you travel? What beauty and brokenness will you find? Will you choose to open your treasure chest and share the love and gifts inside? Who will travel with you? Who will you meet along the way? Who will you invite to join you? Who will you ask to stay? And when the journey has ended and when the day is done, will you find your life and faith have grown because you chose to journey home by a different road? Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning at Grace Episcopal Church in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. I'm the Reverend Stephanie Fox, and I'm so glad you joined us. I'd like to close us with a poem by John McLeod entitled, It's the Journey That's Important. Life sometimes so wearying is worth its weight in gold. The experience of traveling lends a wisdom that is old. Beyond our living memory, a softly spoken prayer it's a journey that's important, not the getting there. Ins and outs and ups and downs, life's roads meander aimlessly, or so it seems, but somehow leads us where we need to be. And being simply human, we oft question and compare, is the journey so important or the getting there? And thus it's always been that question pondered down the ages by simple men with simple ways to 
to wise and ancient sages. How sweet then, quietly knowing, reaching destination fair. It's the journey that's important, not the getting there. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter darkness from your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless you, God keep you, and God help you to have a wonderful week.